So we talked about this and now, now we're going to bring it back. When is instrumental testing not necessary? The instrumental testing is not necessary when it is okay to have uncertainty. In other words, if the risk of uncertainty, the consequence of uncertainty, is not negative, then it's okay to not have instrumental testing. But it's very important to be able to acknowledge when more certainty is needed. Okay. Secondly, if we make a wrong diagnosis from a clinical test and the consequence of, of a wrong diagnosis is not high, the adverse potential adverse outcome of being wrong is not very high, then again, instrumental testing is not necessary. So this would be an example of a, a misdiagnosis not being likely to produce a clinically significant adverse event. Um, so if the problem that we're evaluating and trying to treat clinically uh, is one that if we have a wrong diagnosis there will be no harm to the patient, then it's arguable that instrumental testing is not necessary. And one might get away with that argument. And in many cases it's a valid argument. Finally, when it's, when it's not possible that another diagnosis other than the one I think I've correctly identified at the bedside is present. Instrumental testing is not necessary. So that means I have to know what all the possibilities might be and put them in a list of those that can be identified at the bedside versus those that cannot. And if any of the possibilities in the list uh, that needs instrumental testing to identify them uh, might be present, then the, we have a problem. So I need to be honest with myself to say I don't know when it's uncertain whether the uh, diagnosis needs to be detected with instrumentation. Things to consider when we're looking at possibly using a screening test uh, help tell us whether it's worth using, basically. Is it a good screen? The best designs in the literature of studies that are investigating new screening tests are those in which the new uh, screen that's being developed and tested is being compared concurrently with the gold standard. Screening tests are designed to try to predict something that a gold standard test would be able to definitively identify. And if we want to find out if a screening test works really well, the research should concurrently perform both tests so that we can determine if the event of interest that was detected by the gold standard method can be predicted by the new clinical test. Bors et al. in 2009 also did a systematic review and they determined that looking at the water swallow test there was a huge range. Now remember this is nine years after the Martino et al. study. So now we had many more uh, studies of water swallow, some uh, well designed and some not, but systematic reviews look at the best and they found that the range of sensitivity is very wide some some water swallow studies were very poor at uh, predicting aspiration and actually when you look at the preponderance of evidence they seem to be much better at predicting who is not aspirating than they were at predicting who was which is good remember multiple passes versus multiple fails multiple passes gives us better confidence of who is not at risk this uh, systematic review also found that bedside tests that use multiple bolus conditions, so not just water swallow, also had a really wide range of sensitivity and specificity, making them somewhat not, not making them somewhat difficult to interpret because this means that we do or don't have good properties. Uh, using multiple bolus conditions may or may not uh, be predictive, but that a single observation meaning one swallow, as example, or, or a, a very small set, uh, had very poor predictive value.